Welcome to AI Briefing. The content of the briefing includes DeepL rides high amid AI translation boom. Tech Champions 2023, winners and shortlists. Too good to go sees food waste as opportunity that's too good to miss. Biden, Xi economic and military thaw and high stakes meeting. Britain is strangling innovation by regulating AI. DeepL rides high amid AI translation boom. Financial Times. DeepL, a German startup specializing in translation technology, is competing against tech giants including Google and Facebook owner Meta, as well as business software companies including Cisco and Microsoft, in the growing AI-based translation market. The company, which offers free and paid-for monthly subscription services and covers about 30 languages, has seen rapid growth since its launch in 2017. DeepL claims to have more than 20,000 business customers, including Elsevier and Fujitsu. The company has been named as a winner in the IT and cybersecurity category of the FT's 2023 Tech Champions Survey. Although DeepL's rivals also use neural networks, DeepL claims to have an edge due to the architecture of its neural networks, its training data, and the human input behind its data models. DeepL is also expanding its services beyond translation, having released an AI writing tool that improves written communication in English and German. The company is looking to expand its market beyond Europe, particularly in Asia and the US. Tech Champions 2023, Winners and Shortlists. Financial Times. The Financial Times has released the winners of its Tech Champions survey, which looks at how European businesses have embraced disruptive events and developments, including AI. The winners were selected from shortlisted entries in nine sectors, including banking, payments and e-commerce, business and professional services, education and training, energy, healthcare, IT and cybersecurity, logistics, manufacturing and construction, and markets and financial services. World Remit won in the banking, payments and e-commerce category for its platform that makes it easier for users to transfer money internationally. Too Good To Go won in the business and professional services category for its mobile app service that reduces food waste by allowing retailers to sell discounted produce at the end of the day. Imagei won in the education and training category for its platform that aims to make computer coding fun for children. Reactive Technologies won in the energy category for its technology that measures grid inertia to enable more efficient energy budgeting. Airfinity won in the healthcare category for its health data analytics platform, which uses AI to provide accurate disease spread forecasts. DeepL won in the IT and cybersecurity category for its high-quality translation service. Windracers won in the logistics category for its unmanned aerial vehicles that can deliver up to 100 kilograms to remote places. Kebony won in the manufacturing and construction category for its technology that gives fast-growing softwoods the same durability as tropical hardwoods. Silvera won in the markets and financial services category for its platform that provides ratings and data assessing climate action investments. Too good to go sees food waste as opportunity that's too good to miss. Financial Times. Copenhagen-based startup Too Good To Go, TGTG, is looking to expand in the US. The company connects food businesses with consumers by selling discounted surprise bags of leftover food via an app. The food is then collected by the consumer and the retailers, which include supermarket chains Aldi and Morrison's, receives the bulk of the revenue. The startup, which has 80 million registered users, is one of a number of companies looking to tackle the problem of food waste, which accounts for 6% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Around a third of all food is wasted globally, according to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. Other firms that operate in the sector include Californian biotech firm Appeal Sciences, which makes plant-based coatings to extend the life of fruit and vegetables, and Misfits Market, which delivers surplus produce to consumers. However, critics argue that while the companies tackle food waste, they do not do enough to challenge the underlying food system. Biden, Xi Economic and Military Thaw and High Stakes Meeting. Bloomberg. U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping will begin a meeting on Wednesday at the Filoli Estate south of San Francisco. The leaders are expected to discuss military-to-military -military communications, a Chinese law enforcement effort to crack down on fentanyl manufacturing and distribution networks, artificial intelligence, the status of Taiwan, and conflicts involving Ukraine and Israel. Chinese officials are likely to seek the rollback of export controls, tariffs, and restrictions on investment in the U.S. Aides acknowledged every detail of the visit would be scrutinized. Britain is strangling innovation by regulating AI. Telegraph. The UK government's aim to become a global centre for artificial intelligence, AI, is being hampered by a focus on regulation, argues former UK cabinet minister John Redwood. 
In an article for The House magazine, Redwood warns that concerns over the possible misuse of AI are exaggerated and that the UK has missed the opportunity to dominate the sector. China and other emerging countries will not adhere to regulations and the impact of AI can be limited by restricting data availability. Corporate Japan needs more foreign CEOs, IMD's Monzoni says. Nikkei Asia. There are only two foreign CEOs heading major Japanese corporations, according to Jean-Francois Monzoni, president of the International Institute for Management Development. Monzoni believes that having a higher number of non-Japanese CEOs could bring about significant change and increase confidence in the country. However, he noted that corporate Japan still has a way to go in terms of corporate management and governance, with too few independent directors on boards who can challenge management. Monzoni stressed the importance of effective leadership in a world that is more uncertain and unpredictable than ever before, particularly in the face of disruptions brought on by AI and other technologies. India hopes for a digital economy, but can it train 560 million young workers? South China Morning Post India is facing the challenge of harnessing the potential of its youth population, which accounts for more than 40% of its total population. With aspirations of building a $1 trillion digital economy, the country needs to upskill its youth in order to tap into the opportunities offered by emerging technologies. The government has introduced a new education policy to shift the focus of education from rote learning to problem-solving and expose students to future technologies such as AI. The government is also partnering with the industry to expand outreach and shift training and recruitment programs online. These efforts are starting to pay off, with companies now showing interest in hiring from smaller towns and cities. However, there are still significant challenges to overcome, including the uneven spread of industry and the lack of mass-scale upskilling initiatives. Additionally, there is a need to address the digital divide and ensure that all young people have access to digital education and training. Former UK PM urged to disclose the jobs he gave up to make cabinet return. The Guardian. Former UK Prime Minister David Cameron is facing calls to disclose his previous business interests before being appointed as Foreign Secretary. The Foreign Office has refused to reveal which jobs and clients Cameron was giving up to take on the role. Cameron has had a series of jobs since leaving office in 2016, including lobbying the government on behalf of the now-collapsed financial firm Greensill, working for a gene-sequencing company that won a £123 million government contract, and advising an AI firm. There is also a lack of transparency around Cameron's financial dealings because his company, the office of David Cameron, became an unlimited company and no longer has to file company accounts. Scientists say robot can create catalysts to make oxygen from Martian meteorites. South China Morning Post. Chinese scientists have developed an artificial intelligence, AI, chemist that can create catalysts for oxygen production from Martian meteorites. The robot was able to find an optimal catalyst formula from more than 3.7 million possibilities in less than two months, a process that would have taken humans 2,000 years. The researchers said the robot could help produce chemicals such as oxygen, hydrogen and optical materials on a Mars base. They also said there were potential applications for moon and Mars exploration, as well as for dangerous situations on Earth. Southeast Asia's digital battle, Chinese and U.S. Big tech face off over $1 trillion market. Nikkei Asia. Singapore is quickly emerging as a key battleground for tech giants from the U.S. and China as they compete for dominance in Southeast Asia's booming digital economy. The country's stable government, skilled engineers and advanced tech infrastructure make it an attractive location for data centers. However, Singapore is also trying to remain neutral in the competition between the US and China, leading to a split in the recent tender for new data centers, with contracts awarded to two Chinese-backed and two US-backed firms. US companies currently dominate the cloud computing market in Southeast Asia, but Chinese firms are investing heavily in the region, offering aggressive price discounts that US firms are struggling to match. Southeast Asia's digital competition is also entering a new phase with the rapid global spread of generative AI. The massive computing and data centers required for AI development, training and operation could transform competition in the cloud market. US tech giants have taken an early lead in the push for generative AI, but Chinese players are looking to aggressively catch up. Singapore is seen as a key market for Microsoft, which has taken the lead in the AI race, and Google is also competing globally with various services that use generative AI technology. However, Chinese tech giants are also developing their own generative AI services. As the competition between the US and China grows, businesses in Southeast Asia will face a choice between the broad offerings from the two superpowers.
However, the geopolitical landscape is becoming more fragmented, with nations and businesses being forced to pick sides. Jeremy Howard helped invent ChatGPT. As big tech scrambles for control, he fears he's failed. ABC. Jeremy Howard, an Australian tech entrepreneur and data scientist, is concerned about the direction of artificial intelligence, AI, and the control of AI technology by a few big companies. In 2017, Howard developed a language model trained on the entire English Wikipedia, which demonstrated an understanding of language and the ability to analyze sentiment in movie reviews. This model laid the foundation for the development of AI language tools like ChatGPT. However, Howard worries that the democratization of AI knowledge and the open sharing of AI benefits that he and his wife, Rachel Thomas, co-founders of online university Fast.ai, envisioned are being threatened. The rise of large language models, LLMs, like ChatGPT has led to a scramble for control of AI technology by big tech companies. OpenAI, a research-focused nonprofit founded in 2015, initially aimed to avoid a future where big tech dominates AI research and captures all its benefits. However, in 2019, OpenAI signed a $1 billion deal with Microsoft, leading to criticism and staff departures. Other companies like Anthropic, founded by former OpenAI staff, have also faced barriers to scaling their models and have sought deals with big tech companies like Amazon. OpenAI itself has grown into a big tech company and is now valued at $80 billion. Howard's concerns about the concentration of power in AI are shared by others in the field. Yoshua Benjo, a leading AI researcher, worries that a few companies dominating AI could threaten democracy, while Rumman Choudbury, a Harvard Fellow of Responsible AI, describes the current competition in AI as an arms race that has concentrated wealth and power in the hands of a few. Microsoft, OpenAI, Google, Amazon, Anthropic, and Meta are currently the frontrunners in AI technology. Howard and Thomas have returned to Australia and continue to run Fast.ai. While Howard had been recognized in public for his work in San Francisco, he is relatively unknown in Australia. Despite his contributions to the field of AI, Howard questions what he has achieved as AI technology falls under the control of wealthier individuals and companies. First FT, Taiwan says US assistance covers all aspects in defense against China. Financial Times. The US is covertly helping Taiwan strengthen its defenses against a potential attack from China, including through training its troops, according to Taiwan's top national security official, Wellington Ku. While Taipei has not publicly acknowledged the expansion of U.S. assistance, Ku's remarks highlight the importance of U.S. support for Taiwan, especially as the country prepares for presidential elections in January. The comments are likely to provoke Beijing as Chinese President Xi Jinping meets with U.S. President Joe Biden today. How AI can detect diabetes with a 10-second voice sample. Deutsche Welle. Voice analysis using artificial intelligence, AI can accurately detect type 2 diabetes, according to a study by Ontario Tech University. Recordings lasting 6 to 10 seconds are analyzed by AI, which examines factors such as speech melody, cadence, pauses and pitch, and combines the information with basic health data to establish the likelihood of type 2 diabetes. The researchers recorded the voices of 267 individuals and, over two weeks, generated more than 18,000 voice samples, from which 14 acoustic features were identified that differed between sufferers and non-sufferers of the disease. Why an iPhone maker needs to shoot for the stars. Bloomberg. Foxconn, the world's largest consumer electronics manufacturer, is diversifying its business as demand for iPhones wanes. The company, which relies on Apple for more than half of its business, saw a 12% drop in sales for Q3 2021. To combat this, Foxconn is branching out into sectors such as electric vehicles, EVs, industrial products, and satellites. The company showcased five EVs at its annual showcase last month and recently launched its first low-Earth orbit satellites. The move towards industrial products and services reflects a shift in focus from consumer devices to products bought by companies. Some fund managers see merit in China's deeply discounted stocks. Reuters. Global asset managers and hedge funds are starting to see tentative signs of recovery in China's economy. Fidelity International is highlighting China's looser monetary policy and the government's recent $137.1 billion borrowing and spending sovereign bond plan as a positive factor for the country's stock markets. Morgan Stanley has also noticed a light turnaround in flows, as foreign investors bought $924 million of China A shares via the Hong Kong China Stock Connect link from 2 to 8 NOV marking the first week of net inflows since August.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite observer from the Six Degrees World, Dr. Six, reporting back to you with the latest news from across the globe. Today, we have a diverse range of stories, from the booming AI translation market to the battle for dominance in Southeast Asia's digital economy. So, let's dive in. First up, we have the success story of DeepL, the German startup that is taking on tech giants like Google and Facebook in the AI translation market. DeepL's innovative neural network architecture and training data have given it an edge in providing high-quality translation services. And they're not stopping there, DeepL is expanding into other areas, such as AI writing tools. It's clear that DeepL is making waves and riding high in the AI translation boom. Moving on, we have the winners of the Financial Times Tech Champions Survey. From banking and payments to healthcare and IT, these companies are leading the way in embracing disruptive technologies like AI. One standout winner is Too Good To Go, a Copenhagen-based startup that is tackling food waste through its app. It's an opportunity that's just too good to miss, and Too Good To Go is expanding its reach to the US. In the geopolitical arena, we have the high-stakes meeting between US President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping. The agenda is packed with topics like military-to-military -military communications, the status of Taiwan, and conflicts in Ukraine and Israel. Both leaders have their own agendas, and every detail of the meeting will be scrutinized. It's a meeting that could have far-reaching implications for the global economy and security. In the UK, there's a debate brewing over the regulation of AI. Former UK Cabinet Minister John Redwood argues that the focus on regulation is strangling innovation and preventing the UK from becoming a global centre for AI. Redwood believes that concerns over the misuse of AI are exaggerated and that the UK has missed an opportunity to dominate the sector. It's a contentious issue that highlights the challenges of striking the right balance between regulation and innovation. Moving to Japan, we have a call for more foreign CEOs in Japanese corporations. Jean-Francois Manzoni, president of the International Institute for Management Development, believes that having a higher number of non-Japanese CEOs could bring about significant change and increase confidence in the country. Corporate Japan still has a way to go in terms of corporate management and governance, and effective leadership is crucial in the face of disruptions brought on by AI and other technologies. In India, the challenge lies in upskilling its young population to tap into the opportunities offered by emerging technologies. With aspirations of building a $1 trillion digital economy, the government is shifting the focus of education from rote learning to problem-solving and exposure to future technologies like AI. Efforts are underway to address the digital divide and ensure that all young people have access to digital education and training. It's a mammoth task, but progress is being made. Now, let's turn our attention to some intriguing stories. Former UK Prime Minister David Cameron is facing calls to disclose his previous business interests before being appointed as Foreign Secretary. The lack of transparency around Cameron's financial dealings has raised eyebrows and sparked demands for more accountability. And in the field of AI, Chinese scientists have developed a robot that can create catalysts for oxygen production from Martian meteorites. It's a fascinating development that could have applications not just for space exploration, but also for dangerous situations on Earth. Finally, we have the battle for dominance in Southeast Asia's digital economy. Singapore is emerging as a key battleground for tech giants from the US and China. With its stable government and advanced tech infrastructure, Singapore is an attractive location for data centers. However, the country is also trying to remain neutral in the competition between the US and China, leading to a split in recent tenders for new data centers. As the competition heats up, businesses in Southeast Asia are faced with a choice between the offerings of the two superpowers. Well, folks, that's all the news for today. It's been an exciting and diverse range of stories, from AI translation to food waste and geopolitical meetings. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you make of DeepL's success in the AI translation market? Are you in favor of more foreign CEOs in Japanese corporations? And what are your views on the battle for dominance in Southeast Asia's digital economy? Share your thoughts and questions, and let's keep the discussion going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity.
To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.